Does the perfect sleep system exist? My friend Mike, who is the owner of Zen Bivy, thinks that it does exist. Is this the future of sleep systems? Mike is a pretty humble guy and has created some of the most iconic gear ever. He's been around for a very long time, over 30 years of working in the outdoor industry and has probably designed gear that you already own. Mike, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Great. Thanks, thanks for having for, me. Man, thanks for coming on. The man, the myth, the legend. So <laughs> for people that don't know you or your backstory, tell people what your backstory is and kind of your, give us a yeah, little bit of your so resume. I've done, I've done, you know, out, created outdoor equipment for 20 more, I say in the 20s, but it might actually be into the 30s now, um, years, starting at MSR. That's where I began in the industry at uh, MSR back in 1994. I was responsible for the MSR tent launch um, and did all the initial MSR tents as well as several other things there and then went so, on to other companies. So there's tents on the market that have your handiwork is what you're telling me right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the Hubba Hubba, everybody knows the Hubba Hubba. Yeah. Um, and so that was designed our first season. Um, and there were two designs. Actually, I was against the Hubba Hubba. Jim Giblin designed the Hubba <clears> Hubba. <throat> Before that, there were tents that had hubs, but they were these big plastic, ugly hubs. So I was like anti-hub. I'm okay. Like, this is now going to be MSR. We're way cooler than that big, ugly hub thing. Okay. And uh, But so we were designing two tents. Uh, I forget there was a name for the project. And Giblin came up with the Hubba Hubba, and Jake Law at DAC made the hubs aluminum. They were the first aluminum. So, do you know, are you, are you buddies with Jake? Yeah, I've worked with Jake in the past two, three, four years, a couple of okay, times. Okay, so actually. for those of you that don't know who Jake is, and you own, let's say, a uh, like a Sea to Summit Telos, or you own a Big Agnes Copper Spur, look on the outside of your tent, and you will see his name. There, am I right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I worked on the Sea to Summit tent launch as well. That was the most recent. I've, I've, I, you know, we're talking about Zen Bivy, which is sleeping bags, but um, you know, I've done a lot of tents. Okay, so tents is kind of the biggest category I've worked. So on, the biggest sort of. question, then, the obvious question is, is why aren't you designing tents? Who says I'm not? I mean, we are designing oh. tents. <laughs> I've designed. I know. I'll, I'll be transparent you heard about it here, folks. <laughs> I've been trying to design tents. For, it, my vision was we would have been in the tent category by now. Okay. The reality is, I just haven't come up with anything yet that's good to, good enough to be Ooh. Zen Bivy. Okay. So we've we've made. You know, wow. it's been. I've have two or three designs, and I could come out with. They're incremental. Right. And I just feel like at age 55, why come out with incremental when I want to come out with revolutionary, like the Zen Divi bed? Okay. I, I could send you the tents. You might like them, but they're, to me, it's like, am I, wow, is this going to take the world over? Is this going to create the, you know, fundamentally change the experience? That mm. sounds like a fun test. I'm not going to lie. You should send me some. <laughs> so this is essentially just a top quilt. Though, am I That's right? It. So, what is the yeah. magic with this system? Like, what is it that makes this different from other quilts? Well, there's, there's the quilt itself has three patented differences, but the main ones that you're looking at are the are how the quilt interfaces with the mattress, and uh, um, it is essentially a backpacking quilt like any other backpacking quilt. And most people would say a backpacking quilt is quote unquote better than a mummy bag until it's not um, until the it has some fundamental problems quilts when they get cold will fall off the mattress and create drafts and they also have a problem up at the shoulders and getting around your head and creating okay. drafts and head insulation <clears throat> but isn't the idea of a quilt to make the whole system lighter weight it's never going to be as light as a quilt alone no um, we do have it's not there as a quilt it's a quilt right and it's as light as any other quilt of similar. So you could use this. You don't need this part. You don't need the sheet. You can take this as a quilt. Oh if yeah, you want. no, no. I mean, it is. Yep. It, the the quilt is a backpacking quilt. We sell them separately. And in fact, one of the reasons we use the attachments that are on there is they're just little cord loops. And when you don't use the sheet, it's you know, it, there's no difference between our quilt and any other quilt. Quilts were originally you know designed to kind of be lightweight, but one of the biggest advantages of them is that they're more comfortable and they're more comfortable because they're covers just like you have on your bed at home. When it gets colder and colder at home, you don't 
tie strings around your face, right? right. And get right. yourself into a tight little bag. You just put more quilts on top right. and leave yourself sort of comfortable or whatever. The huge benefit of them is they allow you to sleep in your normal sleep position. So when you're in the back country, your night mirrors more similarly what you do in your bed at home. Okay. A lot of us are spending... <clears throat> 10 nights or less a year in the backcountry. And so if you're not sleeping every one of those nights, you end up spending fewer and fewer and fewer, and then you don't go anymore. <laughs> so, who, so who's your who's your target audience? If you could pick out one person to sell this thing to, who is it? If I was going to pick one person, it would be somebody who can't sleep any other way, who has a sleep position that can't be accommodated by any of the other solutions out there. There's a lot of people who come to us and say, I quit and because I couldn't sleep. And are you, so are I you, think that's the, if that was the target, because those are the people who I think have the best benefit from it. So why did you choose the material that you've chosen? Like, what is it about this ripstop? Is this a ripstop nylon? Is that what this is? No, it's a taffeta. What's the difference? <laughs> Ripstop has bigger <clears throat> yarns threaded through in little grid patterns to ostensibly make it so that if you start to rip it, it'll hit one of those big yarns and stop. Um, but those yarns create, all of our fabrics are chosen for their hand. You know, durability isn't a huge issue on sleeping bags. You're generally pulling it out in your tent and putting it away. And we choose the fabric for the softness of the oh. hand. That's why really we haven't seen like a pure, there's a few reasons we haven't made a pure ultralight version of the Zen Vivi bed. One, and one of the reasons is the hand fabrics of those really ultralight fabrics. I, we haven't yet found something that's quite good enough to be Zen Vivi and is still, oh, wow. you know, okay. in that 28, 28 grand. You know, it needs to be significantly light enough to make it, you know, kind of worthwhile. Um, the other the reason we don't do super ultralight stuff is that it's just so expensive. So the other reason we've chosen 800 fill power and 20D for our most popular bed is... He's, he's, he's answering all the questions I'm about to ask him, by the way. Oh, yeah. So that it's yeah. because if, if you were telling... If you were my next door neighbor and you were like, what would I buy? What should I buy? I would never tell you to buy 900 fill power down and 10D fabrics. You're saving so little weight for so much money. That is true. That, it's, that is true. It's like, it's like, really? Are you... I mean, how many times... I mean, if you're, are you, are you living in this thing? Yeah. You, you have other gear to buy, right? Yeah. So it's like buy a nice tent, right? And uh, yeah. make sure. So yep. it's kind of the best <clears throat> value, right? I mean, and, and people complain all day long how expensive our products are. But, you know, so those 800 fill power and 20D fabrics aren't cheap, but they're not the super ultra lightest. But yeah. in terms of bang yeah. for your buck, it's hard to beat. This is a minor issue. But if I had any issues with this setup i'm i'm and i understand why you did it i'm just not a fan of the clasps you know they're they're tough for me i felt like in the middle of the night like it's pitch black i gotta get up i gotta pee oh i gotta fiddle with this a zipper is just so much easier and then i understand why they're color different colors because you want them to match but in the middle of the night your colors vision's gone which how do you deal with that right unless you put some like little glow fabric or something on here or whatever. But what is the point of these? Is it just to make it lighter? Was it uh, the zipper was too heavy? Um, how much weight does the zipper add? I mean, help me understand these clasps. Yeah, so the original Zembivy bed did have zippers there, right? It had two big zippers on either side and a big <clears throat> zipper in the foot box like traditional convertible quilt zippers do. And... Um, the main problem with zippers is that they're heavy, right? We had the advantage of, oh yeah, it has a left zipper and a right zipper, right? And the convenience of that, but you also have two 28 inch or whatever they are zippers on either side and the weight of all of them. And then also when you're using the quilt alone as just a backpacking quilt, it really, you're, you're carrying like half a zipper sort of down the front okay. of it. So it's kind of not as elegant just as a quilt. Um, the zippers really do add like a big, you know, kind of weighty feel okay. to the top of the quilt and really okay. turn it into a makes sleeping sense. bag. Um, and so, so you're basically those hooks telling me I'm a big to be baby as, for getting your basically well, no, telling me I'm a big baby no, for No, because oh. there's, there's no doubt that the clips are not as easy to use as the zippers, right? Yeah. They're, um, they're, it's, they're analogous to, you know, when you use discrete fasteners, which is what we would call these, like it's just like attaching a quilt 
to a mattress with the straps, right? Every four inches or whatever, you're having to make these, you know, sort yeah. of attachments. It's one of sort of the trade-offs for lightweight. The advantage of doing that, and now there's a bunch of tricks. You don't actually need to unclip those things when you go to bed. You can just push it and slide right out oh, of the top of the, okay. of the thing. So All right. I agree. All right. when, you, when you get more used to your Zen Bivy bed, you'll figure out how to not use those clips. It really more is designed as sort of a set or forget. I'm going to, you know, a lot of people okay. know. I can. I only attach one side. I attach the four on one side, and then I just lay on the other side, and I never attach the other ones. Oh, um, interesting. So okay. you can generally accommodate your sleep position and not have to go through a bunch of um, clipping them in unless okay. it's really cold, and then it's, you know, people are fine because it's... Yeah really cold and it's yep. like I'm glad to have that sort of security. So uh, this uh, new foot box, this is new, am I right? It is new. This foot box, this is new. Is this, uh, is this like on all of the quilts now or is it just it's not. a certain it's ones not. or what? All of our quilts up to this date have been convertible, which means they will close into a semi-rectangular shape. Um, it's actually not a mummy shape. We call it a mummy foot box, but one of our unique features is a Zen Bivy quilt compared to all other quilts is it's not hourglassed. It's semi-rectangular. And that's a huge, that's one of our key um, differences. It, it, it helps us fill the little hole at the bottom because we use the natural folding of fabrics in a semi-rectangular way to create a baffle to fill that little hole you get okay. for a convertible quilt. But previously, all of our quilts were convertible and went to a full flat quilt. And, uh, Are you still selling those? This is, yes. They're okay. still our most popular one. This one, a lot of quilt companies offer it both ways, a slightly heavier one that converts completely flat, and then a lighter one that's just always in a tight foot box and, the, okay. and a closed foot box. All right, let's talk about this sleeping pad. So obviously you felt like, um, you know, I'm making sleep systems. I better make a sleeping pad. I don't know, just tell me about this one. Is this... Um, I have not used this sleeping pad at all. Um, I do think it's insulated. I can feel the insulation. It's got some sort of a, like a Prima loft or something like that in there or something, right? What's inside here? Yeah, a, a, it's, it's something like that. <laughs> not Prima loft, but the same basic idea. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a it batted insulation on the inside. The, the, the mattresses started because there were ju just so few, you know, in a Zen Bivy, the mattress provide is crucial for the insulation. There's no, you know, crushed, even crushed insulation underneath you. So the, the bottom provides the insulation and there just aren't a lot of mattresses on the market that are providing full R value five. So when you buy an EN rated sleeping bag from any manufacturer, it's tested with a mattress with R five, actually R 4.8, but with an R value of five. Well, when you go to R5 out in the marketplace, that's a winter mattress. Yep, sure right? is. And they're selling you R3 and R4 <clears throat> is a warm three season mattress, but they're not. They're, so over the last 15 years, sleeping bags have gotten warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer, and mattresses have gotten colder and colder and colder and colder. And um, it is so common for right now for people to match a 15 degree EN rated um uh, Sleepy mummy bag, bag yeah, with an R3 mattress, yeah, right? And, then and they it's freeze. like, oh, and then it's ridiculous. Yeah. And then they're cold and they're like, the sleeping bag is terrible and they want a even warmer sleeping bag, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, the real problem is underneath. So, but that was the real impetus. It's like, we're going to make all mattresses that match the EN standard that everybody's using to match their, you know, sleeping so bags are these, and mattresses. So uh, are these AST, are these ASTM rated? They're not, not. We don't do any of the, I used to EN rate all of the um, sleeping bags and uh, it's a whole sort of side story, but we don't do it anymore. Uh, so we don't support any of those crazy testing protocols. There's, we do all those um, testing protocols and our claims are based on all of those testing, testing protocols, okay. but we don't so, pay the testing companies. So what, what, what is this one rated so to then? They're all R5. Every oh, they are all. all everyone's in R5. All, every, okay, so. so we built them all to be R5. Some of them are over R5 and some of them are rounded for six to, you know. Oh, you have different, you have different, you have different ones. Okay. I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah. The one okay. you have there is our lightweight one and it's, it's, um, 
the lightest, actually, full R5 mattress, except for the Thermarest Neo Air. So as far as I know, uh, or at least when we launched it, there may be a couple of others that have come out since then, but it's just a fully insulated but lightweight mattress. Okay. I think we have the best inflation and valve system out there that... Um, uh, that really makes them easy to use compared to a lot of the... Now, since we came out with it, some of the other ones have improved their inflation systems, but, you know, it, it's a plug. It's easy to dump the air out of it. The plug has the valve in it, so you can replace yep. the valve. And okay. there's just a lot of ease of use to using uh, our inflation system. Do you, do you have any idea how much this one weighs off the top of your head? This one's a 25 by 77 One light pound mattress. nine... So what is that? Six, is 25 ounces? ounces? 25 ounces. Okay. Yeah, that's not terrible for a 25 by 77. Do you make them narrower than... Yeah, we make a 20 inch and we're really? the only ones who make a 30 inch as well. Um, as far oh. as I know, we're the, we're the only ones who support like a three and a half, three to three and a half inch um, ultralight back or lightweight, I guess if you want to call it that, backpacking okay. sleeping bag I think, pad in I 30 Big by Agnes 80. I Agnes sold one too, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, they could. They could. Yeah. Um, if there's a lightweight one, I, it's possible. I don't... Okay. Uh, if, if they do, I don't know about it. I think it's okay. pretty unique in that size. So we do them in 20... Uh, actually, we do them in 25 okay. by 72 So here's a here's well. a here's a fast question for you. Let's say I want to go... You know, I just want to hit the cut. I know I'm gonna hit the cusp of freezing on my trip, right? That's the lowest it's gonna get. And um, I want the lightest weight setup from Zen Bivy mattress, sheet, top. What's it gonna weigh? <laughs> <laughs> I have that. I have that here. <laughs> I have to total it all. I, I sort if, of feel are like, you gonna you're gonna sleep you're gonna take it down to freezing? What size what size do you wanna know? In like the regular uh, twenty you by seventy two? Let's, let's let's go let's go let's pretend it's me and I need my twenty five inch <laughs> you can move okay. on it. He's got a bee buzzing around his ear. Literally going in your ear. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. <laughs> you okay? Okay. A bee flew. It was almost going to crawl in your ear. It flew to the other one. In your size, which is large, 25 yeah. by 77, the, it, including dry sacks and in the pack. Yeah, yeah, all in the, the pack. dry sacks. Yeah, dry sacks. And everything like that. Yeah, to put why it in not? There. Let's, throw in some dry, exactly. let's throw in some dry sacks. It, uh, yeah, because our, yeah. well, our, our mattress okay. comes with the inflation dry sack. Okay, okay, okay. Right? okay, okay and yeah, then you need, yeah, and yeah. you need a dry sack. Well, you don't okay, necessarily you need a dry you sack. have a compact You heard it here, folks. It's only two ounces. It's included in my weight here. Um, okay. All right. It's um, exactly in your size, exactly four pounds. Exactly That's including the pounds. pad. Including the pad. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And what would that cost? For you, my friend. <laughs> Hold on. Large. No. <laughs> For me, you're going to double it. I bet. $664. 664 Okay. Yeah, that's, that's reasonable. I'm not going to lie because a, a sleeping bag that would run you that temperature that's gonna be two and a half pounds is looking at least $300 probably for most of them. And then a sleeping pad is gonna run you 150 maybe from, yeah. And so, and you're not gonna get good sleep. <laughs> as good as sleep, I feel like, right? Yeah, so the sleeping, the your bed would be $400. It's a $300 quilt and a $100 sheet. It's probably no. It's probably a two hundred and eighty dollar quilt and the three. Uh, and I'm and I'm I'm, I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm. People probably have no idea what I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking yeah. So the, and that's an eight hundred fill. That's the light, right? That's the light. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you could do it. Like if you were like, oh man, I don't want to spend six hundred and sixty four dollars. I could say I know how to get that, you know, sort of down and still keep the weight down. So the insider scoop. If people want to know what really to buy, I would get a core quilt which is actually 650 fill power down and it has that super soft liner we talked about. And just the quilt difference, light quilt to core quilt is not that much. It's only, I don't know, I, I have to look. You know, I know you don't do specs, so don't worry too much. Yeah. About <laughs> a couple ounces on. here, a couple yeah, ounces there, couple whatever. Ounces here, couple ounces. Um, but you save a hundred <laughs> bucks on that quilt for like a three or four ounce penalty and it's more comfortable. So I oh. feel like that's a great, a great intro. Why and is it more combined? Because it has that 50D liner 
on the inside oh, of the sheet. Okay. So feel, walk over there and feel the liner on that okay. one that's laying on the ground, and you'll see right. it's a, it's it feels different than the the shell. You can take your socks off and sleep in it. It just has a. It's not huge because it's just the inside. That's why we can get away with like putting 50D in there. It's a, it does add some weight, but so okay. Yeah, but if you, you want 50D, it's, it's gonna. If you want 50D, it's gonna come with the heavier down, right? It's gonna come with the heavier down. That shell's actually a 30D. And it's a little bit heavier in the shell too, but you'll notice okay. the shell also feels a little nicer. So, <clears throat> so is this a, the one you take? Do you yeah. take this one? It is now. Yep. And I'm and and so I take that and I pair it with the fast sheet, three ounces. Okay. And and then I wear my down jacket. So the the insulated hood um, is if you allows you to put your arms and head up inside and insulate, but you, it's also there to tuck the quilt into. And so okay. you can get the sheets with the uninsulated hood and okay. save a lot of weight and money because it's not okay. down. And then you put your down jacket in there. You can still tuck the quilt up into the hood and use the hood, but you're using the down jacket, which let's face it, if it's freezing, it's gonna be 32 degrees. In addition to your four pounds and bivy, you're gonna have your your down puffy jacket because you're gonna be hanging out until it gets down right. to you know, bedtime or whatever, and you're gonna have that with you. So you could just wear it in the bed and use an uninsulated sheet and save some money and weight that way. So, so there's a lots of different ways to kind of put it together, right? Okay, um, What um, what is the uh, temperature uh, ratings of the what are your temperature ratings? You got a is it a tw- is it a twenty five and a ten right? It's a twenty. Those are limit ratings. Yeah, and the comfort rating limit is ratings. About, limit. Yeah, limit ten rating. degrees higher for comfort. So so limit. Okay, so you're when it says when when people go to your website and it says ten degrees, you're not going to be warm. At, you're not going to be comfortable at ten degrees. You're gonna you're gonna be like I'm not going to die at ten degrees. Twenty EN degrees limit. is what this goes. It's okay, analogous to an EN limit yep. rating. And so <clears throat> okay, that's typical. The comfort, I just want... Yeah. That's so a 10 degree is like, if you're going to go... The 25 degree is really designed to get people down to freezing. Okay. Right? It's like, when we put that 25 degree rating in there, it's like, okay, that's a 35 comfort. But when it's really 35, you're going to have that down jacket. Right? I got and you. So for most people, you can take a 25 degree bed, unless you're a really cold sleeper. If you're bringing your down jacket and it's going to make get most people, yep. probably 95% of people okay. down to freezing or those nights where you open up the tent and you're like, oh my God, it snowed six inches, like, or just below okay. freezing. Um, okay. And then the, the 10 degree is for extended three season, right? Okay. Where it's like, we're really getting down into cold nights, yeah. Yeah. right? 20 degrees right. at night and, you know, and I don't, that other bed is just not warm enough any, for most people. Or a lot of people choose a 10 degree if they know they're a cold sleeper and they, for just regular three season use, yeah. that they're like, okay. I know I'm always cold. You know, that we've all backpacked with them, right? I'm cold no matter what you put me yeah. in. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so then it's like, if you're, if that's a person and they're like, I'm always cold, I've never slept warm. I'm up, I always tell them, yeah, I would get the warmer quilt because <laughs> okay. your body's telling you that's what you need. Uh, so I have one more question for you. Um, would you be willing to maybe give away one of your sleep system setups to uh, a lucky uh, person watching? We would. All right. Which one? (laughs) (laughs) We would love to. We'll do our most popular bed, which is our light bed with a, which is a light quilt and a light sheet with a, and we'll do the complete bundle, which includes a mattress. So they don't have to worry about the R value of the mattress. It comes with it. Um, uh, and we call it the light bed yeah. bundle and it's everything they'd need to, to, um, put the whole bed from their backpack into the tent, right? Wow. Including all the dry okay. sacks and everything. Super cool. Awesome. So you heard that. So then what you got to do is you got to comment below. I want that Zen Bivy. You have to follow Dan Becker outdoors on Instagram. You got to follow what's your Instagram at Zen Bivy at Zen Bivy. And then you also have to be a subscriber of the channel. And then we will follow up with you and you will receive the Zen Bivy system set up for Mike here directly from them. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate you being here. Mike, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate you being here, sharing all this awesome info about this Zen Bivy bed. And we will see you guys on the next one.